Hello, and we're at the working dog ring. And I've just come, Sam Thatcher's just come out of the ring. If you uh, have a look at the videos on YouTube, on Country Sports TV, you'll see that I've got our demos there. Absolutely wonderful demo. How long have you been training dogs? Uh, I've been training, well, I've loved dogs all my life, but proper training probably about 10 years. So my own dogs initially, and then I start training other people's as well, professionally, yeah. Um, are they working dogs or are they show dogs? Uh, working. Uh, I do do pet manners and behaviour as well, but I put aim with the gun dogs and the working dogs, yeah. And you go out on shoots yourself? I do, yes. I beat, I pick up. Um, lucky enough to be on the peg sometimes, but I do, I prefer working my dogs, that's for sure. Yeah, it's nice when they invite you on a peg, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, very much. <laughs> well, how do you shoot? How do I shoot? Not very well. <laughs> uh, that's conservationist, that is. Yeah, I'm still learning. I'm getting taught at the moment, so. And how, when do you start training a puppy? Well, I start from day dot. As I, as I talked to my demo today, it's about pressure and not making them feel pressured. So um, it's it's from eight weeks, but it's about them think, not realising they're being trained, basically, just relaxed and enjoying it. So you're basically playing with them, but they don't know it? Yeah, basically, yeah, the sit, the recall, everything's praising and everything's happy. Yes, it's going to come to a point they do test you, but if you know you've got that bond with them with the with the fun, they, you don't get it as much, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> My dog seems to do it and then he sort of decides that he knows better and does what he wants. Uh, what, what breed have you got? I got a, um, I've got a Spaniel Labrador cross oh. and I got a... Spaniel, but the Spaniel's a nightmare. Well, the thing is, they say Labs are born part trained and Spaniels die part trained. And you know, well, I saw my, with my old girl today, they, they do, they will always push Spaniels, especially obviously that's what I focus on. And you do have good days and bad days, I do. And that's that they're the days to put them away and start again the next day, just so you don't end up feeling disheartened and you know, bad about it all, really. So, and how many dogs have you actually got of your own? Uh, between me and my partner, I think we've got ten now. So. How do you manage to train ten dogs? Well, as I say, little T is uh, retired, and uh, like I said, you know, they get 15 minutes a day. It's yes, on training days they get more, but it's just finishing an exercise on a good note, so they leave knowing that they've done well, you know. So it's um, and they don't all get trained every day, so that's how I work it. And some need a lot more than others, so that's. What it's just working it so that you're happy with each dog and almost someone said it to me once take off that hat and put on the naughty hat and things like that so yeah sam i think it was a wonderful demonstration if anybody who sees it see it it's also on my youtube channel thank you very much thank you very much too thank you he switches off right this way i love eye contact i want him to eye contact means that they're with you and although your Clyde's busy running around, when I ask him, Clyde, sit. That sit means car. That's the start of a stop whistle. I can really call him in. Clyde, sit. Good boy. And then carry on. It's just having that confidence. And what I like to do, I don't often use treats. I'm not anti-treats. But I like the dog to want to do it for me. So, as a reward, I like to offer them a retrieve. Good boy, have a little one. Good boy. Good boy. So, when I get a nice sit from him, Clyde, sit. As a reward, throw him a dummy. Good boy. As a pup, I like them to be wanting to come into my space. So, you get down to their level. I want him to be happy here. We don't want to be lunging at him, telling him off, no, come here, follow him around. You end up dancing with them. Good boy, Clyde. So I just want him to be happy in my space as a reward. So we're going to carry on. I'll give him one more retrieve. As you can see, he's nice and keen. Some of these spaniels aren't keen, and you've got to kind of, that's why by using it as a reward, good boy. Um, you build up that, oh, I do like a retrieve. Good boy. And you can see he knows what's coming now. He's seen I've got the game bag on. He's a very, very switched on little pup pup. Clyde, sit. Sit. And we can build it up, as I say, not just giving retrieve straight away. Clyde, come. 
good boy, sit. But where he's only young, you can throw the retrieve quite quickly, get back down to his level again, good boy. Oh, straight there, good boy, good boy. As they get older, we ask for a sit, Clive, sit, good boy. Regarding hunting with a little spaniel, it's just about building confidence, so, oh, I haven't got any of that side this time. Use the brushings. We're not looking for him to be steady or anything like that. We just want him to be nice and confident. So I'll just grab a tennis ball for Clyde. But all this patience is so important for a spaniel. They are renowned for being a bit squeaky when they're excited. From a young pup, if you can just say, come on, calm down. A sit means calm. It doesn't mean bounce off the walls. So this situation with hunting, giving them the confidence, you just hold him a little bit, good boy. He can watch it go in, send him in. He's got the confidence to go in. Good lad. Clyde. Good boy. Clyde. Yes, that's a bit of plastic. So, same again. Clyde, come here. Good boy. Bring him in. He's nice and keen, but I want that. I don't want him to be all boring and, oh, I've got to ask permission for everything. You want them to be nice and excited, especially for that retrieve. So, same again. I'll let it land and you let him go. Let him have that confidence to get in there himself. That natural ability comes out. Good boy. See if he works it out. Good boy. Well done. If they fail, don't be afraid. Don't keep forcing it. If the more we go, come on, freeze it, freeze it. They sit, they look at us, they think, am I doing something wrong? Go and get that tennis ball and then restart the exercise that you're doing. You don't want them to fail at this age because it puts them off the retrieve and it can put them off having the confidence with you. Good boy, Clyde. It's the longest you sat still ever. Good boy. So that's all I'm looking for with a five-month-old pup-pup is just to be with me, um, be happy with me, and not want to run off and be cheeky so I can go sit. Change my body language when I want him to be happy, get down to his level. I don't mind I'm getting caked in mud. I want him to be with me. Good boy. And all you want is my tennis ball. Good boy. So, guys, this way. Next up, I've got a little heavey. She's 12, 13 months old. So, I'll show you what I would like to do at this level. Good boy. Just pop Clyde away. Good boy. So, okay. Yep, thank you. Could get these. Thank you. Hebe's another Springer. Now I've taken her on. And I really, really enjoy her. She's very, very keen for that hunt. And if you've got a Spaniel that's learned her nose very quick, don't be afraid to take that hunting. Um, away for a little bit just to get that retrieve in there now she's just starting to learn what a retrieve is it isn't start hunting her way out it's about sending her to the retrieve and her having the confidence when i ask her to to go where i ask so as i say 12 13 months it's all quite repetitive training because we're showing her what we want so i'm gonna throw a dummy over here for her Healy. good girl Make sure she's seen it. Good girl. And walk her away. As you can see, I always have my dogs on a lead whilst training. You don't want them to run in or, um, you know, not concentrate. You want them to be with you. As you see, Hebe loves to use her nose. But when I send her for this retrieve, I'd like her to go straight back over the jump. She doesn't say she's a very sensitive soul. So when I send her, unlike Clyde, who's a keen bee. I'll just let her go and not talk. Good girl. Yeah, wait. Edie, back. Good girl. Come on, come on. Good girl. Good girl. Don't be afraid to let them know they've done a good job on the way home. They're all different. Some of them the praise on the way home can get them too fast so it's almost teaching them they, they, you've got to show them so he used to have a bit of a fly by because she didn't know she needed to slow down there they don't know about slowing down and knocking your kneecaps off which is what you don't want 
is teaching them steady, steady, so that they're not flying by and then they get distracted, they drop the dummy, they heat. So, so he's learning to stay calm, he switched on, good girl. I'll just do another memory this side, just so everyone can see. But as I say, initially you can see I'm using quite bright dummies for the youngsters, it's just so when they get to the area, as well as using their nose, they have that confidence to... Good girl. You see it as well. They're not all like Clyde, who won't give up until he finds. Sometimes they need that little bit of help. So by having a bit of a brighter coloured dummy, you are helping them uh, succeed. So I'll send Hebe again for this one. Hebe. Good girl. If you've got a dog that's a bit keen, that wants to run in when you're about to line them up, don't be afraid, you can lead the lead round. So when you send them, you can drop that lead. <laughs> Good girl, Heaves. He'll be back. Just to say, don't run in. Lost. Good girl. She was a bit nervy yesterday. It was all a bit of a show of shock for Heavey. She's never done this before. Sit, sit. Good girl. She loves a hug. My own fault. I do love her. I do wear my spaniels. So, next step, she's 13 months old. I've just started introducing stop whistle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a dummy to the left. Same again, nice bright dummies. So Hebe, Hebe. And I always work in right angles just to help the dogs out. It's always, I, I always stress, you've got to let them succeed. So walking in right angles, I'm going to put a dummy back here. And when they're younger, help them out again. And stand the dummy up. So that when you point them, this is a first step of starting on blind. So when you point them, they look, ah, there it is. So we've done that dummy. I'll just check she did see it. <clears throat> Good girl. But, and then we'll be walking back. And a good example, yesterday, maybe my nerves, I put that dummy out first and then that one. So that's the last one she remembered. So although I lined her up for this one, being young, she tried to go for that one. If we start going, stop whistle, sending them, trying to handle them, you're losing their trust. Do not be afraid to bring them back. I then re-showed her that dummy just so she thought, ah, that's what mum wants. So don't be afraid to start exercises again with your, with your dogs. As I say, they're not robots. And we're sh showing them what we want. So I'm going to send her for this one. See if she stops. I'm going to ask her to go for the one on the left. Yeah. Evie, back. Get on. First round's a fun round. Here we come. There you go. Get on. See there. I just kept bringing her back to the spot where I was sending her. She didn't do anything wrong. Good girl. She stopped on every whistle. Sit. So I'm very pleased. And it's, that's it. It's showing her. If she kept pulling, kept pulling, I'd restart the exercise again. Or... Like us, she's having a bad day, she's just not feeling the training. I just think, right, I'll do something a bit easier, end on a good note and try again tomorrow. Healy's a perfect example of this sort of training. I do about 15 minutes a day. Nothing that she can't do, try and end on a good note. And she was getting about five days of this, just 15, 20 minutes, as I say. And one day she sat there, I'm blowing the stop whistle, and all I'm getting from Healy is this off this again and she's telling me I've just had enough give me a break gave her a week off she just did some bike rides came to the pub got her back boom I had Evie back and it just shows so now she only gets about three days a week of the proper gun dog training things that I want from her and she's nice and patient nice and calm and because she's been such a good girl I will be giving her this retreat Evie back good girl 
Good girl. Well done. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Sit. So that's Hebe. Did some retrieving. As I say, she hunts like a machine. So that's why I do a lot of retrieving with us because we got to a stage you'd only go 20 yards and go mum I can't cope it's too, I can't possibly go that far so I built up her confidence and built her up so she's happy to do a nice long distance without even questioning it and I know I've got that stop whistle and I've got that bond in little heaves hey well done Hebe very good girl so next up I'm gonna use so you, for people that have got more than one dog it can be very difficult to do all the training. Thank you. Okay. Come on, girl. So, these are, I've got Tia, Ginny, little spider who's my friend's dog, who's been our mascot for years, so I'm, it's about time she gets a chance to show off. So, when you've got more than one dog, you've got to, I always stress, if you haven't got those basics, you're going to start seeing cracks when you start working the dogs together. So as long as you've got the sit, the recall, stop whistle, um, and if you're on a walk and you're noticing, it could be the dog that's seven and a half years old, like Tia, who always likes to embarrass me in my demos. Don't be afraid to just focus on them, and if their recall's getting a bit weaker, say, excuse me, I, I said come. I didn't say come halfway and walk off. Make sure they're finishing what you asked, okay? So, Jin, sit, sit. Did this again yesterday, didn't we, Jin? Thank you. So I'm going to sit them all up. And this time, they're not going to come with me when I'm putting the dummies out. It's about patience, sit. And I want them to be watching me. If they move, obviously I'll be putting them back. Don't be afraid to just keep reassuring them, sit. You don't want them to start bum shuffling, whether they're pets in the park, chasing the wrong tennis ball, the picking up dog that has to sit there for 20 plus minutes. Sit. Whilst the dog's, um, sorry, whilst the birds are being shot. Same with the field trial. If you're number 16, you've got quite a few hours before you have to go into the, um, your, your runs. It's a long wait for them to hear all those guns going off, and you want a dog that's calm. You don't want the dog that's like this because it puts you on edge as well. So as long as they're watching, sit. Make sure they're watching, make sure they're seeing. And as I say, if they did move, I'd be keep putting them back. That's my method of training. You've got to show them that you're more stubborn than they are. If, they, if you give in, the same with heel work or the same with um, or anything really, you know, the chasing. If you, sh if you just stand there because you're, oh, I just chased that rabbit again. If you don't go after them, you're not showing them that I will come and get you. And uh, keep you fit, <laughs> that's for sure. So they're all watching, making sure they're all seeing what I'm doing. And as a reward, they will all be getting a retrieve from this. So it's about the level. So today I'll probably just stay where I am, but sometimes move away, change the angle of where you're going to send them. It builds up the memory, and as I say, it also builds up. You can say, leave that, go for that. So picking up dogs, if you've got a dog that's just fixated in one bird and they're missing all of this, and then the keeper says, I want you over there. Where do you think they're going? Not over there. So it's about that respect from you. They like to push the boundaries. I get bad days when I'm training, and sometimes you do have to end on a bad note. Put them away, don't speak to them. My dogs all live in the house, and I like that switch off. They're all zonked on my bed. I'm sorry, but they are. But because they know when they're out training, as I say, they see my game bag, it's, oh, we're working. It's teaching your dog the play time, the chill time, and the work time. It's very important because if you don't have a spaniel that switches off, you spend your life on their case all the time, you dread going to the party or the pub because they're not learning to just relax. So who are we going to have first? Just get my pistol. So please pistol shot for this one, just to remind them, just to help them out a little bit, especially the ones over the jumps. 
So I'm going to aim for that one first. I'm going to ask Spider. Ah, not Tia. Tia, Tia. So this is my seven and a half year old. Spider's four yesterday. And little Ginny's two and a half. Who's the naughtiest? The one that's retired. Sit. Spider. Sit. Good girl. Wait. Spider. Back. Keep it going. Back. Good girl. Leave her to it. Doing a very good job. So this is my friend, best friend's dog. She's uh, awesome at agility. She's found her niche, but she still loves to do a little bit. Spider, come. Good girl. She like ah, ah, ah. Spider. It's okay. Yesterday she ran back to mum, so I just wanted to make sure she came back to me. Say it again. I knelt down, nice and friendly, and you made the right decision. Good girl. Next up, I'm going to have a little ginger. You can wait. And this is it. So if you've had a dog that's been a bit cheeky, that's pushed in, I want my go next. Make them wait. Hey, this is Tia. Sit. Sit. Ginny. 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 Sit. Ginny. Good girl. So I'm going to help little Ginger out again. Show her where I probably want her to go. Good girl. Sit. Ginny. Back. Let her go work it out. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Lovely, Ginny. Thank you very much. Good girl. All right. Well done. So to end little tears, and say seven and a half years old, and she still loves to do all this. My little mate, she was, um, I tell everyone the story, she was stolen as a puppy. I lost her for over a year, and she wasn't very well looked after. Thanks to her microchip, I got her back. And, uh, gosh, she has me on edge when, I'm, when I used to field trial her, but... My gosh, she's been on the peg, she's my daughter's best friend, she's been picking up, she's still child for me, and she's also the laziest dog in the house. So it just shows that if you work hard, that they can do everything. They're not all the same, there's some that can't do it all, but you can get the best out of your dog if you really try, especially these guys. So, oh, now we've got another one. Put spider back, sit, 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 Tia. Tia, good girl. So I'm going to send T-Dog over the jump over there. Tia, back. Good girl. Just let her work it out. I do have a hunt command, which is where... Good girl. You're letting them know that they're in the right area. I say lost or there. But at the same time, you can almost help a dog too much. You start getting the ones... You start getting the ones that start looking, asking questions, am I doing it right? You want, you, I believe in getting them to the distance and then leaving them to be a spaniel. If you start over controlling these guys, they either go one or two ways, they go even wilder, oh, would you stop blowing that stop whistle? Just leave me alone. Or, as I say, they get a bit soft, they ask questions and you don't want that. So they've all done a very, very good job for me today. So Ginny two and a half, spider four, Tia, seven and a half. Yes, they know what's coming next, and nine times out of ten, this magic runs off. So if you just uh, just keep them sat there, after a good training session, I really do like to let them know they've done a good job, especially when you're working them as a pack. So I'm just going to grab Heebie Jeebie. Good girl. Come on. Good. And just sit them all up. Oh, I won't bring Clyde. Might be a bit too exciting for him. But it's about that. You've done a good job for me. I'm proud of you. They kept their eyes on me. And you can see, they push a little bit. But if, if you turn them off in the wrong way, they won't forgive you for it. They're, they're spaniels. They'll never forget it. So it's that you push the boundary, yes. Just go back. You're not going to have it. So to end on a good note, I always like to let them know you've done a bad job for me yet again. Ready? Okay, let them have a play. They absolutely love life. This is their playtime. I don't mind it. But when I want them to stop, I just... <laughs> Sit. T-Dog as usual. I'm retired, I'm distracted. Wait. T-Dog. 
sit. So I like that stock whistle when I want them to come in. Here, come, Tia, Ginny, Ginny. Tia, this is pooping drop there, please. Come on, Ginny. And on a good note, calmness, switch off. And when I ask them to heal, fingers crossed, they're gonna walk uh, back, to, back to the gate with me. So I just wanted to show you, as I say, this is uh, my team and start from a puppy, start from eight weeks. I believe in that, but you, as you can see, it's about building that bond with them. You want them to want to be with you. Otherwise, you have the spaniel that's 200 yards away chasing uh, rabbits, pheasants, mice, anything they can find. So I just want to say a big thank you, as always, to Neil and the team for inviting me. This is our fourth year, and I've had some new team members today, and they've done really, really well. Um, thank you to Whiff It Mix for my sponsorship, because as I said, out then, my dogs look absolutely fab, really pleased. Um, if you've got any questions, I will be stood at the gate for a short while, and I do have business cards if you do want to grab one, based in Cheltenham, but also commute down to Hampshire to do team training and group training, so it'd be lovely to speak to you if you have any questions. Thank you very much, okay?